I love that song. That was Hozier. It's a good song. Yeah. You asked me if I knew it, and I was like, uh, I don't know. And then it gets to that chorus. It's yeah, beautiful. take me to church. You know, I, um, it was like, it was a big, like, YouTube push for that song. Big ads. I mean, there's pop-up ads and banner ads on, like, even the most random thing that you wouldn't even expect that uh, be advertised on. I mean, they threw some money behind it, man. For they sure. really did. And, and it's bizarre. Um, I bizarre. still say it would be a great Elton John song. I could hear. Look. I could hear it. Yeah, I could totally hear it. For those uh, who just maybe heard that for the same time, that was uh, Hozier's Take Me to Church. Just go on YouTube and check that video out. It's um, <laughs> it's, it's so good. That song is just soulful, and it's dark, and it's haunting. And uh, it's it's everything that I would want in a song. I think we're gonna make that Brian Wilde's official theme song. Wow! Wherever you walk, yeah, we'll just be playing the song. Well, hey, welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, well, I'm sure you are just joining. Or we are just joining ourselves, but this is the third podcast of DorksAndForks.com, and um, it's kind of a retrospective. Yeah, you know, uh, it's just Dan and I here in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, we had kind of been busy this past month doing, um, you know, we do a lot of other things outside of just dorks and forks, and we had other artistic obligations yes. to go on. Yes. And Dan, where were you? I was in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma? Isn't that a Broadway musical? Is it? Well, Oklahoma is. Didn't you do uh, Oklahoma? No, I've never done. I'm, I, I'm not white enough to do that show. <laughs> <laughs> Them like he's too brown. He's too brown. He's a brown I person. There is a part I could play in that show if ever, but I'm I'm way too young. But there's that uh that Indian you know carpetbagger. There's always salesman. one brown person. An Indian, not Native American Indian. Like yeah. Oh, an Indian. Durka Durka Indian. D- oh wow. Yeah. Durka. I said it. Muhammad John. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. He's Ali Ali Hakim is the character. But anyway, Hakeem. that's besides the point. I was in Oklahoma City for the minor league baseball promotional seminar. Well, you actually you work. For a company, Bruce Productions, correct? Bruce Productions uh, has a a part of our business uh, that works with minor league sports and minor league baseball, especially. And um, it, it's a traveling entertainment act that uh, that does minor league sports stuff. It's a lot of fun. There's the act called Reggie, fun for hugging the purple party dude, and it's like a character mascot type thing. It's it's honestly. One of the craziest and weirdest and funnest uh, experiences uh, working I've ever had. And Chris Bruce, who's uh, been maintaining that character for the past 15 years, just knocks it out of the park, pun intended, every that is single awesome. time. So. He's a thin guy. And, you know, I, I just met him at the RKVC birthday bash. And um, I guess being in a suit like that keeps you. <laughs> <laughs> sweats it, it keeps you it keeps you fit for sure and chris can put away some food too yeah, I bet. he eats like nine plates of food we went to a, a buffet a, like a chinese buffet thing for a business meeting one time and i i thought he was going to eat the entire buffet that's awesome it was ridiculous but no, yeah he's a uh, putting on those 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 suits it's it's the um, the character is very much like the fanatic it was actually born out of that whole uh, stream of things. Dave Raymond, the original Philly fanatic, actually created the character with Chris. Oh wow! Uh, in a previous incarnation of, of uh, the company, which still exists as well, Raymond Entertainment, and it's that type of character. So it's crazy. And but the yeah. thing that distinguishes Reggie from other mascots is that he actually has uh, a voice. He speaks. Really? So yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So anyway, yeah, we what's were. What's he Oklahoma. sound? What's he sound like? I, you know, I, I I can't do the voice justice, unfortunately. And every time I do it, it it's not the same. Chris has a a very unique knack for get nailing this voice. Um, nice. I, I can't even begin to do it. It's that's funny. but it's like a very it's a very high pitched fun like. Hey guys, what's going? That's not even close. What it is? <laughs> Chris is gonna kick my butt now for for even trying to do the voice. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun, and, and he gets to interact with people. So where really I mean, cool. can we? Is there a dot com? That yeah, if you go to reggiefun dot com, um, you can find out all about Reggie and what he does, and, yeah. and the different parks that he's visited over these past fifteen years, and where he's gonna be coming up soon. Cool. So you can actually probably catch Reggie a lot uh, down at the University of Delaware uh, coming up this fall at the uh, the pond. The uh, it's not the pond. The other uh, skating rink that's there. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, that place. Oh, that place. That place. Check out reggiefun.com for that yeah. information. And and Bruce Productions. I mean, you guys are doing the Zomprom. Yeah, we're putting on the Zomprom on October 31st. You can go to the Zomprom.com yeah, for that. The Zomprom. And it's a zombie themed you know costume party. That's awesome. Having a lot of fun over at Delaware Live right there on Kirkwood Highway. Um, on Halloween, and part of the proceeds uh, help the American Cancer Society 
and uh, we're going to continue to make strides. The Making Strides Walk was just this past weekend for us uh, in our time frame. It's going to be like whenever, whatever weekend it was by the time yeah. people <laughs> listen. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue to take a bite out of cancer and make some strides and raise some money. 30% of the proceeds go back to fighting breast cancer. So kazamprom.com. Check it out. Come on down and join us. Tickets are nice. only 25 bucks. So how can you go wrong for a nice, fun evening on Halloween? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 25 bucks for Halloween to do something on Halloween is not expensive at all. I really did not mean to make this opening. This opening. <laughs> it, it just yeah, happened. Like a big ad for Bruce Productions. But hey, it is what it is, right? Whatever. So, yeah, I mean. Zomprom.com. Uh, while I was away, what did uh, what what were you up to? I heard you went over to the Tilton Cool Cafe. Oh yeah, we um, we did a little recording over there uh, for some segments for the show, mm -hmm. this month's show. I thought maybe that would be um, a good idea, yeah. maybe. And I uh, met some really interesting people, and some people that <laughs> were probably not not as interesting. Well, no, no. I'll say it. I wasn't there. I'm not offending anyone because I don't know who they are. Yeah. Um. No, they're and they they probably won't make the cut of the show, nor would they ever probably know where to hear it anyway. Unfortunately, maybe for us and them. No, I mean there are some definitely interesting people, but I'm I'm thinking we might actually just put out like a little mini outtakes for this. Oh sure, yeah, you know because I play the Benny Hill theme song behind it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, but I mean it's it's it's, a, it's probably you know a half hour of of stuff of just random of stuff. outtakes and wow. ra other artists and and random community members i think the whole premise of the sh you know uh, the show was going to be like you know uh community um kevin malloy opened a little he's always had this art gallery on the seventh on the corner of seventh and harrison here in wilmington and uh ever since i knew him and we always had you know like fringe theater or uh events art shows and we always had potluck dinner parties on Tuesday nights. Nice. Uh, so when I first moved out of my parents' house, you know, from the Burbs when I was 19, um, I moved into this neighborhood. And Kevin always had this kind of incubator for young artists or uh, we even called it the gayborhood. There was a, a large gay I was population. Say, is that like, w was he incubating something else? I mean, like he was just, you know, he was definitely no incubating. No offense to anyone no. in any way, shape, or form. No, not at all. But um, it was it was great. You know, growing up in that environment and um, just being all around all these these incredible creative and strange people um, really shaped <laughs> who I am today. So yeah, it is, sure. you know. Um, but one of the artists that we had for the Art Loop um, was Dante Silicato. Do oh you yeah. know Dante? I know Dante. I'm actually really good friends uh, with both his brother Justin and his yeah. sister Jenna. You know, I roommate. I, he was my roommate for a while, oh man, and um, you know, m my very first computer, my, well, it was my brother's, we bought from Dante. It was like this little Toshiba thing, and I remember, <laughs> remember putting themes on your computer? Oh, man. Remember that? You would put, like, you would download a theme, mm -hmm. and it would have audio bites, like yeah. weird little, like, like a Simpsons do you still theme. do that? No. No, I mean, does anyone, is that still? Is that even still possible? I, I mean, remember I guess you can download, like, a sound suite. Yeah, I remember I had this, like, Kevin Smith one we oh, had nice. it. it was like mall rats you know <laughs> and you would like mess something up and it would be like jason Mewes, like yeah <laughs> you know i mean and it was just like the icons were mall rat That's themes hilarious. and and uh no, oh I man actually, that was a flashback I, I, I haven't actively used like a windows based machine yeah, what is that? In, in eons man it was all dial up aol <laughs> dude and i remember you know you used to get hard thinking you would hear that. Oh my God! I'm and you would be just get connected. Really yeah, I'm going to be connected, and there's going to be like girls. Oh, I hope girls I'm on the other line. Hope. Hopefully, they really are girls. Yeah. And I'm going to meet people, and it was oh like God. it was a whole. That's you know, when LOL started. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. Like people started in chat rooms, like L O L. Yeah, it was bizarre. Those early AOL internet days. Oh. Of of dial up and and remember, it wasn't like so twenty dollars a month to do AOL. Yeah, my parents did too. <laughs> Well, I think my parents did too, but yeah. they always held it against us. I just you know remember, what I, mean? I just, oh, of course. I just remember yeah. all those stupid AOL discs coming in the mail. Oh, like, man, I remember. 53 the, hours. Yeah, AOL. what was that? I remember that too. And if you think about it, that's nothing. nothing. 50 hours. I mean, that's like a week maybe I mean, anymore. literally live on the internet. <laughs> yeah, that was so. such a weird time of, of internet. It was the dawn of, the literally yeah. the dawn of the age of Aquarius. And now look at right us. Now, so. now look at us. So anyway, um, Dante is getting a divorce. 
Wait, say what? Yeah, dude, he was married for like two years. Uh, my wife and I were guests at his wedding, and as as he was ours, and um, it's really sad. Wow, that's that's a shame. Yeah, because it, I mean, so, uh, it was some of the coolest. I'll oh, tell you what. Let me not get into it. Okay. Let me just play the clip. All right. All right. Uh, we are here at the Tilt and Cool Cafe here in the lovely corner of Seventh and Harrison. What history! What a rich history this corner has. Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, we're sitting here across from me is Dante Silicato, man, myth, legend himself. Mm, that scoundrel. Oh uh, yeah, let's not forget scoundrel. What have you been up to, Dante? Well, I've been practicing the art of asbestos-related disease claims. Oh, that's that sounds fulfilling. It is right about the time I'm about to leave. <laughs> oh, really? It's just not maybe... But I did resign this week. Really? That's right. So you've just, you've given it up. I'm giving it up. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm passing the baton to those who came after me. Oh, wonderful. So uh, besides asbestos claims, uh, what else have you been up to? Well, I'm preparing to head west. How far? All the way until I hit the bay. Oh, fantastic. With your wife? You still married? I am not. Really? <laughs> Boom! Really? <laughs> yeah. What'd you what'd the you divorce mean? is just about finalized. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh, man. And what happened? It's all here. <laughs> it's all in your poetry. Well, I've been compiling a small book of poetry this year since it all began in January called The Severed Truth, a compilation of streaming consciousness, drunken scrawlings, and Buddhist thought. It's a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Sounds like it. I'll be packing up the Subaru and leaving this town. Well, you know, back back when we used to hang out, I mean, when, in our early days, in That's our right. early 20s, you uh, you had, you went out west. You I did. did. You, you did the, Twice. the California thing, right? You were in some movies. Right. Some movies. You, uh, didn't you, you, had, you like, uh, held, uh, what's his face with a uh, gun? Bob Dylan. Didn't That's you? right. I, I was trained with an M16. What movie was that? Masked and Anonymous. It was so anonymous that no one saw it. <laughs> <laughs> no one can find Dude. it. Nor can anyone spell the word anonymous. <laughs> you know, actually, I think I saw it on HBO at like four in the morning one day. I, I was, yeah. They were I, trying to play the uh, Pacific time. <laughs> <laughs> and you were in Bring It On too, right? Bring it on again. Bring it on again. <laughs> Once more. <laughs> was that three? Was that, that was three? Two? Uh, they kept making them until they stopped <laughs> bringing it on. And you were the mascot. Sammy Stinger. One of three. One of three. There so was a stunt man that did the high jumps. There was me that did the dancing. And then there was the actor that got the credit. <laughs> you almost hung out with Jack Black. No, I did. Yeah? We had sushi together. Oh, yeah? Him and his mother. No. On the set of Envy. Really? It was really cool because Ben Stiller was acting really weird and antisocial. Yeah. And then I turn around and Jack Black's standing next to me and he says, Hey, I'm Jack. I'll be working with you today. I'm like, Whoa, I'm, I'm Dante. Do you actually, you left a voicemail on my phone oh, yeah, for the Orange sick. County rap party and I was sick and couldn't make it. And yeah. somebody put you on my cell phone or put you on the phone and you left a message for me. He's like, I don't remember that. Yeah. I must have been wasted. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, But hey, hey, hey you, you got to come have lunch with me and my mom today. So. Wow. We sat there and had lunch and talked about Little Italy, Wilmington, and all kinds of weird shit. Oh, yeah? yeah. Can I say shit? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, why would you even talk about Little Italy, Wilmington? He said, where are you from? I told oh, him really? where I was from. He started asking about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Had he ever heard of Delaware or Wilmington? I, I, I don't think so. I think he found it fascinating because he was curious to what actually goes on in, in little a little sideburn-sized state. <laughs> <laughs> That clings to the eastern shore. Yeah, dude. So, you know, not to not to go back to your wedding, but right, it was a great wedding. I know. Dude, it was like the nerdiest, geekiest. It was dorkiest. my favorite day ever. Yeah, you guys walked down to like Legend of Zelda, right? Right. But like the played like for a wedding. We only made it like two levels, I guess. Wow. In the end. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that was like. And, you know, what was great about your wedding was, you know, it was in Arden, it was in the Guild Hall. Right. And you had all the custom plates. You know, you had, it was almost like every plate was unique. You know, you had... Um, it was assembled from many thrift stores over yeah. the course of probably a year. I actually traded with one of the people at next plate. to me. My plate, because <laughs> he had 1978, 
Oh, right. Plate. And that was the year I was born. Right. No, we use that. I'm sure we use that plate almost every day. That's cool. Yeah, and you uh, you gave out little cards that were like, instead of like your birth sign, it was like what your tree was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, tree uh, sign. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but, it, you know, that, that hit on. We had books on the table. You know, yeah. the tables are named after books. Yeah, it was a cool little like thumbprint kind of sign in. It was like a tree. And then right. people did thumbprint and then drew little, like they were the birds, little faces on their ink. Yeah, her dad actually painted that tree. Oh, yeah? Damn. So now it's probably going to sit in an attic at her mom's house. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can't believe you guys. Yeah, no. Yeah, it just went kaput. Really? Man, I'm sorry to hear that. Dude. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Do you it produces poetry. Yeah, would you, you, would you like to read maybe something? Yeah, I'm going to do some, probably going to just pick selections later on tonight as well. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Man, right? It's messed up. But did he say that? Did he say that my wife left me? I don't. I'm pretty sure he did in that. Okay. I don't think he did. It's kind of cool that he hung out with Jack Black. That's I'm awesome. sorry, and we're back in the studio. Hey, we're we're kind of. Hey, I'm playing Dan these audio clips because he wasn't here. So um, he he is listening for the first time as well as everyone at home or at work or I'm in your true. vehicle. Poor Dante. What a that great sucks, wedding, man. though. He said he's, he just left. He just had an after party in and was uh, bounced out. Yeah, back on the West Coast, man. I'm going to miss that, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, you want to hear some more of the interview? Yeah, I, I'd love to hear the All rest right. of what he's got to say. Yeah, coming right up. So, I got so this is from The Severed Truth. It's uh, been in the works for nine months, and I'm about to get born in three weeks. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't. Actually, <laughs> you lost me on that one, don't you? I've been in the womb creating this poetry, oh, the see. ups and downs, the, uh, yeah. as I've been developing through this whole journey, yeah. and I'm about to come out. Wait, you're about Just to come out? Come out. Of the womb. Oh, of the womb, not of the closet. <laughs> Man, I was going to eat, you guys. The closet, the garage, <laughs> wherever. You're going to have, like, <laughs> placenta cream all over you. Okay, so I got a couple of things. I, I, I could do one now if you want. Please. And then I've got one about food if you want me to do that a little bit later. Sure, yeah. Okay. Why don't you do your house? Yeah. So, let's see. I'll do one uh, it's a little bit funny. How about that? Uh, number 16. Let's see. All right. Silly little fool I am to attempt to sleep in the woods. Falling quick, sliding down slippery ravine-like hill. Still slick from the rain before. Down wet leaves and grass, sticks and vines. Down upon other blunt and or sharp objects that I next day realized left bruises on my chest and areola. Down into this wooden ravine to sleep on a log stretched out under stars. Cool air, mild comet, mild climate, back to nature, oblivious to the possibility of being eaten by a wildcat or raped by a dirty Mike and the boys or mugged by another fellow vagabond. A sudden crash and a shout of, oh shit, breaks the silence of my hidden retreat. Hidden from the local watering holes, hidden from the scars of rejection, hidden from the going-ons of the outside world, hidden under a canopy of trees and stars, alone on my log until now, until my cousin, falling down the same hill as I, is initiated into that occupied ravine. He knew how I felt, even through the same time and patience, coupled with positive intervention and mild ventilation. There can only be one man standing at the end. Which one will it be? I ponder this as I lay stretched out upon my perfect log covered in coarse brown bark that digs into my spine. The absurdity and recklessness of sleeping in these quarantine woods finally reveals itself to me. I slowly rise back to my feet, brush myself off, get back into the human race, and make my way back to my abode. Wow. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. All right. It makes me oh, never want to write again. I'm the only one who snapped. Yeah, I was about to ask, <laughs> I was about to ask you. No, we're on the I do like those that. snaps. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we might have to break the bread. Bread is broken. Oh, I can't Dante, the man, bread. that's heavy, bro. The bread can't be in the same space as it's the heavy. cheese. I was leaving the bar a little heartbroken one night. Yeah. Decided to sleep in the woods. Everyone said not to. Just made me want to even more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was beautiful out there. Out in the woods, mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. There was a, a tree that fell down, and I just was... No, no, right here in uh, Wilmington, right... Lovering Avenue, if you go down those little... Oh, yeah. But you got to slide down because it's, it's a little steep. You know, it's really those life experiences that um, make you the artist that you are, you know? Yeah. I mean, how many people say, besides the homeless, could say that they slept in a tree? 
Swiss Family Robinsons, maybe um, some Boy Scouts. That's all I can think of. I don't think I've ever slept in a tree, so. Nor have I. It might make me a better artist if I did. Hmm. Start with is, your own backyard. <laughs> real question is, if Dante falls down drunk in the forest, does he make a sound? Only if my cousin's sliding down behind me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no one would have known except for the crickets and the mosquitoes. And if you were to make make a sound, what what would it what would it sound like? Oh man, like a, uh, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Majestic. <laughs> or a <laughs> mosquito. <laughs> All right, something like that. So, oh man! So the female voice we heard there for oh, yeah. was uh, my good friend, who unfortunately I wasn't there to hang out with her, uh, Gina Paletti. Yeah, Gina Paletti. Uh, if anybody listens to uh, WSTW in the afternoon, yeah. Gina is the right hand woman there, and sometimes yeah. fills in for Nancy Johnson on the morning show with my good friend Spencer Graves, who will be but? DJing at the Zomprom. Oh, yeah, along with live music, but uh, the big package. Sorry, I had to get that other plug in. Yeah, no worries, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dante cracks me up. I mean, he's a funny. It's dude, so man. sad, you know. But like, you know, as an artist, I feel like uh, sometimes. I mean, Did not that I'm saying you need to get divorced to be a good artist, but you need some kind of tragedy yeah. in your life. I remember, sure. dude. I remember I was in some messed up relationships back in my time, and I think uh, we've all been there. And I would just drink, man. I would no, just, no, no. You know, I I would go to Iron Hill Brewery, and I would get a growler. And I remember it w I would get cannibal, you know, this mm. Belgian style man eater. Oh, that's man. why they called it. It was so high ABV. And I would, I was just so depressed in my relationship. And um, I would go back to the house and I would drink half of it. I, I mean, mind you, this is like, you know, this is post lunch shift, right? Sure. So, yeah. I mean, it's like 2 30, right. 3. And I would drink half of this gallon growler nice. and I would just like pass out in my office. And then I would just like wake up, and, I'd, uh, and I would just, uh, and I would just drink that other half. And I was so mm. depressed, but you know, I I feel like that's when my best writing came out. Sure. You know, I feel like, you know, and it, I wasn't even writing about, you know, the relationship that I was right. In you were just or how writing. miserable I was. You know, it was all fiction, and it was kind of a, I kind of specifically remember it was kind of like a detective tail and um he was in this weird apartment building with all these floors and each floor had oh. i don't know some some had different issues on each floor i don't know some psychologists like some could probably like dante's inferno almost yeah except you're going up yeah, instead yeah. of down interesting and um yeah and now that i'm you know just fat and happy my writing is shit i can't even write for the show <laughs> or the website you know <laughs> it's like, like i can't yeah, i can't yeah, even yeah. write Subtext, just <laughs> shit writing. The dog. Yeah, I am so happy with my. Door. Yeah, you know, <laughs> got a house and beautiful children and a wife. Oh, I and hear I've, one talking I've downstairs she's, right Yeah, now. she's coming downstairs. She wants to be on the show, but of I'll course she wants that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what it was. Oh, so anyway, yeah, a couple more guests uh, coming on. Max Weber. Weber. Webster? 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 I got a Weber. I have to consult with uh, Sorry, Max. producer to make sure what, what name. He is awesome. It's always fun. It's you always know? fun when we're recording. The producer's not here. No, she's, no. And um, <laughs> I've got to talk to our producer. And um, maybe I'll text her. Hey, Peanut. Hey, my daughter, Gia Sarah. Oh, Dude, that that literally was literally just walked <laughs> up and punched Brian right in the penis. <laughs> Can I get a high five? Can we? <laughs> Dude, don't high five. <laughs> Go back upstairs and watch the iPad. It's your My Little Pony videos. She, she just walked just in and punched right me in the penis. <laughs> <laughs> she, she ran back and just went, boop. <laughs> Come here. Good Lord. Come say hi in the microphone. Hey, way to make your introduction to America right there. Socking your daddy in the show. Gia, say hi. Don't do it. <laughs> Give me a high high. Do you want to sing Frozen with me? Really? Are you sure? Because love is an open door. What do you want for Christmas? A nice Twilight Sparkle. Uh, what kind what? of Twilight Sparkle? A ten rock. And a tumbler and a pony and a megaphone. Okay. Awesome. Well, Brian, what do you want for Christmas? I want a Princess Twilight Sparkle. No, you want a brownie doll. I want a brownie doll? <laughs> <laughs> but br 
bronies are adult men who like My Little Pony. Which Brian, I'm pretty you sure you're it. a brony. No, look, I'm not a brony. I just, I just like to support what my daughter likes. That doesn't make me a brony. Look, if my three-year-old daughter likes My Little Pony, and I want to support what she's into, sure. and it just happens to be My Little Pony, it doesn't mean that I'm a brony. I, I think you have a t-shirt that says I'm brony. Okay, look, I did buy the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I saw the documentary on Netflix. I said these there's people. There's two are, of those documentaries. So these people are messed up, man. Uh, there's got to be a T-shirt. There's, it, they're almost as messed up as the people in that documentary that's no, called no, no, more punches, no more dick punches, please, sweet. Please, thank you so much. Go upstairs and watch the iPad. <laughs> the documentary that's on Netflix that's called uh, I Think We're Alone Now. That's about grown men that are obsessed with the '80s pop star Tiffany. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Oh wow. Those those people are They've so gotta special. Be. I'd imagine they would be a lot like Sarah J fans. <laughs> <laughs> just weird old men just, just creepy, creepy old, old dudes. dudes dude Sarah J put up a picture or like it was like a video of her singing behind her computer and in like four hours it had over like a thousand likes on Facebook really? and that's not a boosted post that's not no. you know she didn't put money behind no, that no she's just just her like sometimes I sing that's always her that was it I've, I've seen <laughs> that one <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about sometimes I sing sometimes I Sarah sing Sarah J I love you yeah sometimes and your unicorn tattoo she's such a unicorn <laughs> but she's a fanciful character dude I have no idea where we went in this I don't know. All I know is you so look we got Max <laughs> and we have Gina Poletti uh, going on the show so uh, so what else happened in you something cool I guess see. We'll find out. Let's Coming find out right together, after. as we used right. to say at the Apple Store. Let's do it. And just joining us, the lovely and talented Gina Poletti. Hello. Thank you. Here, why don't, here, let me get a little mic check on that. Uh, oh, no. Actually, I turned you. No, wait. I turned you down because no one was in that seat. Oh, it's right now. Ta-da. And welcome. Hello. Welcome to the show. Gina, thanks for coming out and doing this show with us. Absolutely. This is fun. Now, you're... You know, we, we said the many hats, you know, on our Facebook, uh, <laughs> the many hats of Gina Paletti. So many hats. Now, if you don't mind telling the audience what, what many hats there are. I know you work for WSPW. Correct. And you... Well, my main hat is I write and voice many of the commercials that you hear oh, voice on WSW and WDEL. WSTW. Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> Go on. And then uh, I call myself Nancy Johnson's understudy. So when Nancy is out for sickness or jury duty or vacation, I am uh, first out of the bullpen, if you will. Yeah. Very cool. Relief speaker. Yes. No, <laughs> relief <laughs> speaker. I like that. I may, I may use that instead of understudy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm enjoying this beautiful fall sangria. Yes. Would you, you want some? Sure, definitely. Yeah, help yourself. We have an audience. Here, what's your name? Oh, my name's Max. I'm a friend of Dante's. Oh, hi, Max. Hey, 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 we got an available microphone if you want to chat. Oh, is, is this thing on? Yeah. So, um, so you do WSTW. Correct. You do, um, I know, a theater review? I do. Uh, uh, Jason Tokarski and I, who's the our webmaster, he and I are the uh, writers of the Delaware Theater Spotlight, which is a local theater review page of Newcastle County Theater because there are so many great, great theaters in our area. Oh, yeah. So totally. we have like a calendar that has what's coming up, what auditions are coming up, and also reviews of many of the local shows. Yeah, my, uh, yeah, I used to work at uh, Candlelight Dinner mm -hmm. Theater. That's where I met my wife. Three seasons at Candlelight under the Miller regime, if you will. What's funny, Don? I'm just remembering where you lived for a little while. Arden, in the, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't you live in the boiler room or something? In the basement. <laughs> the boiler room? I don't think the theater I, had a boiler. I, think I fantasized about it. You lived it in the basement of, of the uh, weird of fantasy. theater. Fre yeah, weird thing to I just imagined the boiler right next to your Freddy, bed. Freddy Krueger is like right. in there, and he's like, oh. <laughs> you know, I was about that. I was, I'll swallow your soul, but I was confusing my horror films. Yes. Yeah. You know? No, it was the basement. <laughs> no boiler room. And it was haunted. <laughs> oh. Like the candlelight is haunted? Candlelight theater? Yeah, oh, um, yeah, there's some stories on there uh, about like one of the old actors. He died. He was like 97, and he died. Um, and he haunts the place. And you know, when you're downstairs, you actually hear him walking around the house. What does he want? I don't know, but I remember sleeping in the in the more musicals. <laughs> <laughs> no, more dramatic, dramatic non-musicals. 
Um, he wants to that age, Fountain be too much energy. Yeah. <laughs> was he strictly non-musical? This, I, this well, fellow. So, yeah, I, it was. It was long before my time. Oh. Yeah, I started uh, with Beauty and the Beast, and then I guess left. I saw it that. At nonsense, I couldn't take. Nonsense. Couldn't take it. He's more into the Spoon River. Yeah, you know, I was. Um, you know, I ran stage, stage right, and uh, the Rose Drop. Mm-hmm. I was. I triggered the Rose Drop. It was like a couple brake lines that were hooked up to the pedals through a fake, you know, in the glass, and I'd have to wait for my cue, and then I'd pull it. Very nice. And then it would fall. Sometimes. Sometimes it wouldn't fall. And it would just kind of linger. So then we'd have Hang to like out. whack yeah. at we'd it. We'd have to like hit the wood. <laughs> Old you know, school um, gaffers. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, um, I don't remember if the night that I saw it, if the rose worked or not, because that was a while ago. Yeah, it was, it was considerable. So Candlelight Theater is, is haunted. Yeah, That's a I true mean, story. You know, I, maybe I remember you telling me that. Uh, you actually did a few seances. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah we kind of went in there and said, oh, it's kind of cool because it's hollow. this is our hollow Halloween episode. Halloween. So maybe we can talk a bit uh, scary. Candlelight, yes, haunted. Absolutely. No, there was, um, there, we did a seance there recently, but the first seance we did there was a few years back with the Pennsylvania TAPS organization. Oh. So, like, the Coast Hunters people that you see on – what is whatever cha- sci fi? Discovery C-fee. channels? It was on sci fi. Oh, God, don't even get me started. When they changed from C- to s- sci fi to sci fi? To S Y F Y, I was so upset. I was, I was like, don't, don't you mess with my intelligence. I don't mean, look, you look dumb down to your audience. It looks good show on me. Show me Sharknado and Croctopus, you sons of bitches. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, it makes us talk about it. So, so anyway, Ghost Hunters, those types of the taps, you know, the uh, whatever, the paranormal society, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The Pennsylvania chapter of that organization came to the Candlelight Dinner Theater, and I think our the sound guy at the time or our videographer. Who exactly is in there? Who's haunting the place? The, the, who's haunting the place is one of the original owners, yeah. Julian Burris, who was an actor, an amazing actor in his own right, and, ha- and had an amazing uh, resume, and uh, was kind of the mentor to s- to a lot of local uh, actors uh, in the area, the the Paul Goodmans and the Bob Millers of the world. Um, well, he he is he he is haunting table twenty six at, yeah. at the Candlelight Theater. Well, like I I did live there for about two weeks, right in the basement of <laughs> Candlelight Theater. It right. was made, I was I think we've all been there at some you know, point. Like, <laughs> you have that kind of helped us out, man, in many yeah. ways for sure. You have that. I had, I had a crazy breakup, and yeah. um, and I was I had to leave, you know, and um, it was a dark and stormy night, and I ended up at Candlelight because. Uh, I started doing strikes there. I, th- I guess I struck um, Jesus Christ Superstar. And for those of you that don't know what Brian's talking about, strikes like is he is he on strike? No, strike means like we're we're breaking down the set and you yeah. know we're getting rid of everything and clearing it out for the next show and rehearsals for such. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I remember going back and and telling Bob Miller that I was like um, I just got kicked out and I've got no place to go. And he was like, Hey man, come on in, you know. And he he brought me in and. I worked there for three years, but, you know, and then every all my current friends right now are, came from Candlelight. Subs- Even you, you. I mean, we knew each other well, we knew before. Each other before that. Kind of. But, Brian, you met your wife there. I met my wife there because yeah, of That's this. a true story. Yeah. It's amazing. I actually, I met my my baby's mother there as well. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. So Yeah, yeah we are Candlelight. My baby mama, I done met there. <laughs> Don't make me put my don't take don't me th- don't make me take my weave out. <laughs> don't I'm gonna take my earrings right. out. My, so, my uh, mother, my daughter's mother is not. Yeah, she's <laughs> Italian. <laughs> that at all? No, your your daughter's mother is. Yeah. My daughter's mother is the weirdest. She looks Italian, yeah. but she's uh, Indonesian. Oh. and like Irish. Yeah. And some German. Yeah, that's bizarre. And I'm German, Thai, and Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the most beautiful little girl. Oh, stop it! You do. We you do. do. Thanks. I made her myself. That's I, that's I say that all the time. Your, be, your daughter's beautiful. I made her myself. I, thanks. I, I, I give that to everybody. Yeah. Um, so back. Yeah, I remember waking up in the basement of this place, Ooh. and there was a dark shadow standing in Ooh. the, you know, the open door. Yeah. And um, and it was just kind of looking. He was like in a top hat. That's scary. And, no, we and then I'd be laying back down there, and it'd be dark. You know, no one would be in the building. It'd be two o'clock in the morning. He would hear. Creaking, what? No footsteps. Ooh, no, it's, it's crazy stuff. Yeah, we did the seance yeah. there with the Tap Society uh, a bunch of years back, and and uh, then we went through with like the the you know 
the uh, modern or the actual real world equivalent of the Ghostbusters PKE meter, which is like a, a, an EMP meter, electromagnetic pulse uh, thing, and yeah. doing all that stuff. And uh, we did recordings, you know, like they do on the Ghost Hunters. Yeah. Like, if if you can hear me, say something, and then you go back and listen to the recording, there's nothing there. But then sure. they say that there's something there. Sure. And blah, 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 blah. And then we did another one more recently, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, sometimes it <laughs> got to the point where, like, a good friend of mine, Billy Hart, actually was hiding in a coffin, <laughs> and, like, trying <laughs> to scare other people that were, like, Jeez. walking around and stuff. Because nothing was going on. What was on. really funny is that poor Billy actually got stuck in this coffin, and, like, nobody ever came <laughs> to where he <laughs> was. And, like, he had the best was, night's sleep he ever. He was sitting there for a couple hours and, like, texting people, like, are you guys coming by? And <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. But um, no, yeah, candlelight is it definitely has some some spirits about it, and good spirits and such. No, nobody harmful in any way. Like there's there's also a story. Anthony Perkins is tied to the candlelight theater as yeah. well. He was yeah. an actor there as well as Bruce Willis, among uh, Barbara Bel uh, Sue Stroman, of course, famous for directing both the producers and Young Frankenstein on Broadway. And this is right in Arden, Arden Delaware. Flop. Yeah, right here in Arden, Delaware. A lot of people don't know where Arden is, but we'll, we'll, we'll get <laughs> into that. That's a whole other some, ball story. But uh, there's, there's also some story about, like, Anthony Perkins, like, because he did Psycho, and then after he died, uh, there was some kind of, like, you know, headless horseman type action involved. I don't know. Some kind of cuckoo story there. It was just crazy stuff. Definitely a haunting over there, and right. uh, but also a great place to go and see a great show and have some 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 good food and some good drinks. Yeah. Speaking of drinks, I mean, we are. <laughs> I, I'd be lying if I told the listener that we were not drinking. We well, we ourselves. always enjoy a, a yeah. good drink. And right now we are drinking Newcastle Brown Ale. Why not? I was c- trying to go for like an English ses- session beer, some kind of low ABV. Um, Wait, you know, are both of these beers mine? Yes. Oh, man. How did, I think I forgot about one of them. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, we had a great – we had a drink for the show. The show at uh, Tilt and Cool? Yeah. Yeah, we made a uh, – had Brandy the bartender come up with a little uh, oh, cocktail. Great. You know, because it was a potluck dinner theme and art show. Because um, it was about community. It was about community. So you want to take something that you could share with a lot of people. And uh, well, so apparently the gummy bears are calling us right now. What's, what was that? RKVC. Hey, RKVC posted something new on Facebook. Oh, man, it's it's cool. Sure. Getting a little text. Peace, carrots. Anyway, anyway well, well, well. Peace, carrots. Well, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, man. Peace, carrots. Well, well. It's Go cool. Ahead. That was RKVC. And, um, <coughs> yeah, so she made a sangria. A yeah, nice pitcher. Yeah. Sangria. So, so uh, why you look that up? So here, we'll let's, let's, yeah. let's talk a little bit about what we're drinking. Uh, every month, you know, we have uh, our friend uh, make us a, a cocktail, and her name's Brandy. And last last uh, last one, she came up with a Bavaria Mule, and uh, this time we're doing a little fall sangria, uh, some Pinot Noir, and there's some you know, Cointreau in it, and Palma, like a pomegranate liqueur, some apples and pears, and ginger ale and orange juice. But you know, we'll we'll play the little clip on on the website and and uh, the radio show. Uh, once we record it, what it do you, is what delicious. Do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love it's very it. good. Yeah, I plan to have at least uh, five, um, six more glasses, um, provided I can keep everybody else away from it. I, <laughs> I like the tartness from the pomegranate. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think the green apple too. Yeah, you know, it brings like a little, that yeah, that tart. It's good. I think it would be really good with the cheese once we break into the cheese. Oh yeah, we do. Thanks for segueing into the cheese. We have. Um, you know, it is a potluck theme, sense of community and things that you could bring to a potluck dinner party uh, that you don't really kind of have to worry about and temperature control and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, we've got three cheeses here. We have a uh, Ilchester, Ilchester Stilton from England, from California. We have a delicious uh, uh, um, Humboldt Fog. And then we have a nice Tellagio from Italy, all of which I purchased at Capers and Lemons Market. I think they hmm. have uh, some great cheeses, uh, great prices. Some sea salt, caramel, some nuts, and some fruit, and everything that we have to cut up. Where is that, Capers and Lemons? You know, g- you kind of want to Google it. It's kind of a weird. It's the off Lancaster Avenue, like going into Hocaston mm-hmm. from the city. Sort of. And it's kind of Centerville, Green Centerville, and Tattnall. It's like a little, but it's in an industrial park. It's kind of like hidden, and uh, Centerville Road, right? It's right on Centerville yeah. Road. Yeah, I think if you're coming from Newport, you would see it on your right hand side. Mm-hmm.
just want you to get another, another text message before we start. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm blowing <laughs> up, dude. I mean, you know, promoting shows and promoting anything. I mean, you're on your phone. It's constantly. You're going. in, like, I understand. you know, you're, like, in um, whatever that, you know, professional site is. What LinkedIn. Is LinkedIn. Whatever that should have. LinkedIn. So the, you're on LinkedIn, and you're on Facebook, world, Instagram, you know, Twitter, and you're constantly trying to update these things. And yeah. And you're you're trying to reach out there and and you know and ask people to become friends with you so you can promote your own thing. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, this stuff doesn't just happen. No. You know, I mean, it does. The social stuff. I mean, that is. I mean, there is. It's. Yeah, I mean, I think nowadays it's a lot easier. Sure. Just to connect and be like, hey, blah blah. Yeah. Blah. Back in the day when I was doing film, like this didn't. So back in the day before the internet, or when the internet was young. It was impossible. Yeah. You would like print out some old crappy flyers and you would like hang them up on like. Signs and stuff around around the city, like that was as much Put them on the telephone poles. gorilla style marketing, yeah. and as, as much was. as there was, you know. Yeah. And social media is gorilla. I mean, it's not like you're really ultimately paying for no for, for well, the I process. Mean, it's depending on how you go about. I it. mean, if you want to go and pay, you know, Facebook ten dollars a day to do it, but oh, yeah. you don't you don't really have to. You just have to be active. You know, yeah. you just gotta kind of keep with it. But yeah. um, well, that sangria reason. sounded really good that you guys were drinking oh, yeah. that night. I'm, Sorry, I'm really I disappointed went on I, d- I didn't have any of that. That, that sangria was delicious. And, you know, and the cheeses were good that we got from Capers oh, and yeah. lemons. And um, I mean, way to put together that cheese board, you know? Oh, man. Yeah, what? look, I mean, we're going to have a a, uh, a Game of Thrones episode where it's like I bring out my pagan feast, and that includes a cheese board. But that's more of – well, w- that's a whole other episode. another time. It's a whole other episode. My Game of Thrones episode. I love it. So, um, <coughs> I've watched three episodes so Max, of that show, and that's it. Oh my god, it's the best show ever. And uh, not that it's not good. I just I haven't taken the time yeah. to get into it myself. You know, if you if you go to season one and episode one, I mean, if you get through the first three episodes of Game of Thrones, which is where I am right now. It, after that, you're just it's you're it's in. It's cake. It's cakewalk. It's you're just you're in. Anyway. So Max, uh, Dante brought a friend named Max, and who also does spoken word and, and all that, and uh, is a great voice of talent. So I decided to record him, and I think you know I'm going to record more of them in the future. But you want to hear a bit of Max? Yeah, I'd work? love to see what uh, yeah. what Max has right. to offer here. Here we go. Uh, but yeah, so maybe we'll dive in. Are you you all set up, Max? Sure. Yep. Good to go. All right, ladies um, and gentlemen, what's your last name, Max? It's uh, Weber. Ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Max Weber. Uh, How she does it. Every week she does this. She stands at the bottom of a tall, bleak mountain. Wind blows, rips iron clear off her armor, showing her jeans. She still has the scarves from where the wolves bit her. She calls them mosquitoes, but she ain't much bigger than they. Pulls a hook from her pocket. Where the ladder doesn't reach, she carves her own way, clear into the rock. She makes drawings where she goes. Happy cats, mostly and her dreams, and things she sees every day that you call dreams. If wind whaps her face, she shrugs it off. If a bird pecks at her back, she sheds just one long teardrop, which freezes into a bludgeon, and she fights. If her hands freeze, she may sprout wings if it suits her. At the summit, someone greets her. We thought for sure you'd stay home, they'd say. She melds thin air into a beer bottle, bites off the cap, and takes a long sip. Then she smirks. What? And miss the sunrise. Wow. Oh, thank you. Very That's nice. fantastic. You, you should read audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, That's my dream job. Yeah. If Mine I could too, do actually. nothing more than read audiobooks, I have recorded an audiobook, uh, yeah. and it took about 30 hours of my life. Sure. Uh-huh. And those are 30 hours I will never get back. <laughs> what, what, oh, no. was the bo- what was the book? Uh, the book is called A Life of Love. It was written by Santonu Kumar Dar. Oh, boy. And uh, it's available on Audible. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and do you get royalties on that? I do get ro- I only get royalties, yeah. actually. Oh. I have made a grand total of $11.71 <laughs> from 30 hours of my life. <laughs> It's yeah. fantastic. So audiobooks, while it is my dream job, in general, is not very lucrative. No, yeah, I was I thinking about not. creating, like, you know, now that I have all this recording equipment now, is, like, just doing audiobooks and, like, putting them on YouTube and, you know, stuff like that. Well, the website that I, that I go through is um, acx.com. 
you can, it's power through Amazon, and you can actually audition for all oh, yeah? of these different books, yeah. And it's, it's really easy to use, it's just sometimes it's only royalty, so you are kind of taking a gamble I, as to whether or not you're going to make any money. Yeah, I mean, because I, I just listened to uh, Dance with Dragons on audiobook, and that was like 40 hours. Yeah. That's big. But then you, you know, to put that into, um, thank, thank you, to put that into kind of, um, you know, because, like, what other books are there? Like 1984, The Hobbit. The Hobbit was only like nine hours of an audiobook. And then you get one Martin book, and it's like hmm. insane. 40 whole work week. hours. Yeah, and that's where I listened to it at work. And, you know, it took, took about a week and a half. Well, the book that I recorded, it took me 30 hours. You know how long the finished product is? Oh, no. How long? Six. Oh, that editing. Might be four and a half. But because you have to do it a, a bunch of different sure. times. And you're your And then there's producer. other voices, and you, you might well, kind of flub I, a line. I do all of the voices. So, sure. you know, I have different characters that I do. Like like what? <laughs> oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Sample. Um, he just did. I know. <laughs> well, I have I have a couple of different character voices. Uh, the one that's terrible is, like, my guy voice, which... If you're a woman reading an audiobook, you're not really trying to sound like a man. You're just trying to not sound so girly. Okay. So my guy voice kind of sounds like this. <laughs> but what is, Brian, what is what does your guy voice sound like? I mean, I didn't know I she guess did my guy voice sounds like this. <laughs> I didn't know she did impressions. I, I had no idea. That's, oh, I that's wonder. Hilarious. You know, she does uh, Carol Channing check this no, out. No, she does. Yeah. Come on. Yep, I bet right you I'll, I'll bet you I'll beat her for Carol Channing. Still a great like, yeah, my Carol okay. Channing is not very good, but it's a <laughs> no, great voice. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a huge respect for, uh, for people who do uh, uh, voice acting, because it's just, it's just such an unsung, you know, profession. Um, I, I did hear a story about, you, you mentioned, uh, um, his name's Kevin Conroy, the guy who did Batman's voice in the animated series. Yeah. And um, uh, I think he was working uh, at a, um, uh, a soup kitchen in New York City. I'm pretty sure that's that's how the story goes, and he was kind of, like, incognito. I mean, nobody really knows what he looks like because voice acting's, like, his bag, but I guess somebody, for whatever reason, recognized him, and he did the, I am vengeance, I am the knight, I am Batman, and everybody in the whole place loved it. Yeah, he, he <laughs> tells that story in the uh, documentary. Oh, that's great. And uh, I think it was a homeless guy came up to the... And through the line, he was like, hey, you're Batman. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and he's, yeah, and he kind of goes through his lines and stuff. It's a good documentary. There's a really great uh, movie, too, called In a World that is um, Lake Bell is the actress who is the main character in the movie. And she's trying to break into not just the voiceover business because she is a voice actor, but she's trying to break into the movie trailer business because you don't hear women – in movie trailers. One man. In, and they're trying There's to bring back maybe in a world. Total. <laughs> that the whole movie is about bringing back in a world because um, I can't remember his name. Don. The guy who made in a world famous. Yeah. In a world where two lovers. In a world where two people are totally underwater. Remember that Geico commercial? Yeah. <laughs> that was that guy. Yeah. And he passed away a couple years oh, ago. No. Yeah. Um, and they did this movie in a world kind of in honor of him. It's really, really good. Yeah. Even if you aren't a voiceover geek like me. Hmm. So is there one opening for his position, or are they going <laughs> to blow the whole scene <laughs> open? Give us your best in a world. In a world? Yeah. In a world. That's good. Hidden yeah, that's from this good. world. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Beneath another world, there is a world unknown. One man. One man. Will do, do something. He will find that world beneath that world, hidden behind that other world. <laughs> Tom Hanks <laughs> is Forrest Gump in Forrest Gump 2. The search reckoning. for the hidden world. <laughs> Gump happens. Well, that's cool. Well, on that note, uh, I think uh, we're going to take a break. It's time to hear from our sponsors. And uh, yeah, we'll, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll actually we'll, we'll get into some food. You know, We'll start... Uh, I know you brought something. I did bring something. What did you bring? I, I brought a, a secret family recipe for pumpkin soup that we nice. made before pumpkin was cool. Before pumpkin was beer. Yeah. When they it were was. just chunking it. A long time ago. We're not chunking it this year. Was beer. Yeah. Pumpkin chunking got canceled. That's what I heard. Canceled? Why is yeah. that? Yeah. They were trying to move it to a different location. I heard they were moving it to Dover where the fireflies are. And it, it, it just 
kind of, it was, it's very hard to move something as big as Pumpkin Junction. Sure. So oh. they're trying to kind of get everything together and then redo it next year. Gotcha. I thought it promoted food waste or something. No, I always wanted to go because uh, Carrie from Mythbusters is always there. Oh, yeah. Uh, She's not on Mythbusters anymore. They, like, fired almost everyone on Mythbusters except really? for Jamie and Adam, yeah. Yeah. It's conspiracy. I know they did. I, I know. And I, I love Grant, and I love they Carrie. They're great. Maybe they're just getting kind of, like, old, you know? Like, like I mean, busting just, the same myth. Yeah, they, they weren't coming up with anything fresh. They needed, like, new tattooed girlies. Yeah, right. Anyway, when we return, you guys hanging out? When are you going on? Never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, we'll be back. So it's my understanding that, yes, Pumpkin Chunkin, Punkin Chunkin, pumpkin. As, the, as it's called, uh, yeah. isn't happening uh, for, for lots of reasons. But one of the main reasons is that last mm -hmm. Pumpkin Chunkin, uh, somebody got hurt. What? Like a, a, a pumpkin, a yeah. pumpkin okay. was hurled and like hit a dude. No. And like in bad news fashion. Oh, bad news bears. Bad news bears. And uh, instead of suing the, es the establishment that is Pumpkin Chunkin, yeah. sued the dude that hosted, had has been hosting. What? Uh, uh, the event on his land for so long, and he was like, "Well, f this noise, I'm out." Wow! And he's like, "You guys can't hold this event here anymore because wow. I'm I'm going to get, I'm going to lose everything." You know? Yeah. It's 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 going to be Dunzo for me, and it's yeah. now Dunzo for you. So, wow. Yeah. So now they're desperately trying to find a new space. Desperately seeking suit because I'm sure a lot of money. I mean, that probably pumpkin chunkin probably produced a fair amount. Oh, oh my God! That was a big deal, but not for enough for a guy to just eat up lawsuits. Like no, within, not you know at all. I mean? I mean, and you got to think this is an event that started with like you know just a bunch of dudes just <laughs> hanging out, slower, and lower rednecks, drinking and no, doing we love thing. our slower level. Sure, slower, lower. Hey, there's more chickens than people in the state of Delaware. Yeah, that that's an actual statistic. Jeez, that, isn't that weird? But yeah, so anyway, yeah, I mean, they're doing their thing down there, and it was just a bunch of dudes hanging out, like, let's see how far we can fling this. I don't know why I'm doing like a... No, I love punk and junk. No, I mean, <laughs> like I said, I, you know, Mythbusters always showed up, so I always wanted to Well, go. and that's only within the last couple of years, too. So. Yeah. Well, we had some food coming up. We had, like, Max made some guacamole he's nice. going to talk about. Gina's got some soup. That's Gina Paletti. Gina but Paletti. Gina, your wife, tonight, mm -hmm. had made some delicious cupcakes, which we're all we're going to enjoy later. I already ate mine. Did you really? Yeah. I'm, I've been staring at mine thinking that I was waiting for you to eat yours. <laughs> no, no, you can totally eat it. <laughs> Damn it. I tell you what, well, here, Max Guac, and then he can tell us about this cupcake. Sure. We should talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, might as well be recording. This is gold. And welcome back. Welcome. Same welcome people back. here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We were just talking about um, movie ideas, Groundhog's Day. It variations. I have no idea what was going on. <laughs> we took a little food break. We had some um, habanero guacamole. Uh, it's a chipotle guacamole. Chipotle, man. Ah, that's what it, it is. It, did you get some? Can I offer you some? No, nope, yeah, it's hot. Uh, perfect <laughs> level of heat. Like it. It's got nice acidity. Uh, if I feel like a lot of lime juice in that. Yeah, like a lot of. I, I like, squeezed yeah, three limes. Squeeze the life out of them. They're yeah, they're sure. dead and buried. <laughs> <laughs> in a compost bin <laughs> in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's not that. overwhelming. <laughs> it's not overwhelming. Oh well, good. I'm glad. Yeah, how'd you make how'd you make it, Max? Uh, well, um, here's the here's the recipe, such as it is. I, I mean, I've been making just guacamole just you know for yeah. years, and every now and again I get bored and I kind of want to change it up. So this time it's uh, three avocados and um, about I think like uh, probably close to a cup of sun dried tomatoes, maybe like three quarters or something, wow. and uh, uh, about half of a can of those. Goya uh, um, uh, chipotle peppers in adobo. adobo, and I use a lot of the adobo because you know you need a lot of salt too uh, for guacamole, and um, I think that that and like the spice from the adobo gives it a really nice um, yeah. give it a really nice counter um, counterbalance to the uh, to the avocado, um, and then um, like a whole Spanish onion I think and that's basically it other than the limes of course yeah. And now, did you run it through like a Cuisinart? Did you mash it? Did you chop it? Like, nah, I did it all by hand. Yeah. Yep. Just cut it up and uh, mix it, mix it all together. With your hands. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I just kind of like karate chopped uh, nice. everything. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Just diced, diced it to bits. Nice. I feel like you have to hand mash or guacamole because mm. then I feel like it's cheating. 
If you don't get yeah. your hands in there? Really? No, I'm not saying with, with necessarily with your hands, but yes. hand mashing. Yeah, if it's if it's too processed, it always it just if it's too creamy. It if, if it even tastes good, it just doesn't taste good to me. Exactly. Like I need that chunkiness, that kind of yeah. handmade guacamole. Yeah, it's it's got to be chunky. That's why, like, I mean, some people like to run guacamole through a food processor, and a lot of times, if you get it pre-made, and a lot of times if you get it pre-made, it's uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's just like all one kind of it's like too solid. Creamy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You it's know, like my, filler. My, my folks are from the Midwest, and out there, there's this trend where you put mayonnaise and guacamole to, oh, like, no. thicken uh-huh. it. That's no. not right. The Midwest no. does a lot of things that's not right. With mayonnaise. <laughs> and sticks of butter, you yeah. know? It's you can just, never have too much butter. You can always have too much mayonnaise. Dude, I was watching Wampin Food Network, man. They were like, they would put a stick of butter on a stick, yep. and then batter it, and then deep fry it. Yeah, and this is I fair food. And then when you eat into it, it's just a melted stick of no. butter yeah, deep inside fried butter breading. Deep fried butter is not okay. And butter in your coffee is not okay. Butter, butter in, in your, your coffee. coffee. Yeah, that's the new. What is this? That's the, that's the new, like, butter paleo cream. trend. Is they a put cardinal butter. sin, butter know, in your coffee. Gross. I don't put anything in my coffee. <laughs> Max, dude, we're going to have to have you back, man. Dude, I mean, I'm, really, I'm really a stickler for coffee. I mean, like, uh, I think really good coffee doesn't need, uh, doesn't even really need, like, milk. Milk or half and half in oh, or anything. I don't know. I'm a cream guy. I mean, I, I like a splash. Mm-hmm. I don't do sugar, but I'll, I'll I like coffee flavored milk. Okay. What's the point? Well, sometimes I like coffee, but my body does not like coffee as much as I like coffee. I understand. So that's that. why yeah. I but like But when to you say your body fair, doesn't yeah. like coffee, I mean, you're talking about just like po- pooping, right? I mean, it dries you out too. Oh, but no, sometimes I get like a sour stomach immediately. Yeah, but isn't that just part of the enjoyment of coffee? I mean, that it, it's a cleansing agent. That's just your body expressing its happiness. Yeah, it's like thank it's you. A, it's a happy. I just I have the need for speed. I think nausea is happy. <laughs> mm. It's like <laughs> whenever you fall in love and you feel extreme nausea, it's the same oh, thing. Oh, okay, okay. And it's tasty. So really, everybody should just you know drink saying. coffee instead of being in love. It makes more sense anyway. Well, the guac sounded good. Then yeah. made a, and then Gina made a, a pumpkin soup. Yeah, yeah, here she is talking about it. Okay. Well, I think it's um, love and coffee. I'm looking at the soup that Gina made. Pumpkin soup. Doesn't pumpkin really soup. good. Mm. It's like pumpkin pie batter. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's liquid pumpkin pie. Before pumpkin was cool soup. I should, did you guys? You want to try some? There's a whole big old crock pot in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's. Let me, a, let me step. Oh, thank you. Or, or they could, yeah. That is delicious. And then you said this is like a family recipe. My family used to own a restaurant in Kutztown uh, mm-hmm. when I was in grade school and in high school. And this is something that we used to have on our menu. And it was an appetizer, but we had a lot of people who would order it for dessert because it, I mean, it's a sweet pumpkin soup. It's delicious. And most of the time when you find pumpkin soups, there's chicken and, and onions and No. This is what pumpkin soup should be. It should be pumpkin. liquid pumpkin pie. Now, I have a question. Is yeah. your recipe too secret to share? I will totally share it. Okay. Oh, ooh, um, here we go. The only, Ladies the and gentlemen, only thing I is get your pad and your pen. It's kind of a feel. Like, I don't have measurements. I just kind of wing it. So, th- for th- what I did yesterday is I actually um, roasted a sugar pumpkin. They, sometimes they're called sugar pumpkins. Sometimes they're called pie pumpkins or sugar pie pumpkins. They're the real small ones that you can get at the grocery store. Okay. Um, and you want to make sure that uh, they have a really good color and they're nice and firm. Okay? Firm. Yes. Good color. Like when you say firm, like let's say you were to oh, thank you so much. get a handful of it and you squeeze. No if, it, if it's mushy, that means it's going bad. Okay. So you don't want that one. The spoon's in the bag with yeah. It's like pumpkin pie. You shouldn't exactly. have given me this. It's all it's, going away now. It's like liquid pumpkin pie. <laughs> That's why we're eating it with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like, uh, <clears throat> if, if you're just now joining us, like we're an actual radio show. <laughs> we are. <laughs> if you just like fast forwarded. Somebody just walked by <laughs> on the street. <laughs> and and looked in the you, window. What are you guys if doing? You just, if you just turned us, it's like, hey, get back to work. It's like, hey, if, if someone's listening to this in their cubicle and you just walked by and you're just now joining us, this is dorksandforks.com, and uh, our food theme today is uh, potluck. Uh, you know, potluck dinners uh, is usually something that 
a community does, right? Where neighbors and friends get together and they bring a dish. Uh, I think it's an excellent sense of community mm -hmm. uh, involvement. It's also good for networking and, and making new friends. Uh, and we all brought a dish today, I think in a showcase. And right now we're tasting a Gina Paletti's pumpkin soup. And the reason that I, I brought the pumpkin soup is because um, I would go and visit the restaurant when I was in college. And every time my friends would find out that I was going to visit the restaurant, they'd say, you're bringing back the soup, right? <laughs> and I would have to bring back gallons of the soup and basically pass it out to all of my friends in the dorm. Everybody gets a gallon? Yeah. Well, no, I, I would come, I would get these like little quart sizes. Yeah. But I would have this big box that had like at least. She would barter for like toiletries <laughs> and oh, weed. Nice. She'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I need, I need, I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> I need toothpaste. <laughs> Tampons and like and an ounce. Cigarettes, tasty cake. If you cake. knew me in college, you would know how weird that statement is. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I would totally lick this bowl, but I don't want to gross out anybody here. This is radio. There is more. Yeah. You know, the people at home might be offended. So after I roast the pumpkin, yes, uh, about 400 degrees, about half an hour or so until a knife goes in uh, easily, and I salt it pretty well with kosher salt before I uh, roast it. I also mix this with um, a small can of pumpkin as well because I wasn't sure if I should have got, if I should have purchased two pumpkins or just one pumpkin. Sure. So I figured get an extra can just in case. Uh, so this is actually a combination of both. And then you put in heavy cream. I put in about uh, three quarters of a cup and then that's on heat and you kind of stir it. And then you slowly whisk in light cream. So this is basically pumpkin and cream. Medium cream. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but you put the heavy cream in first because then it kind of creates a really good base. I also kind of uh, balance it out with a little bit of apple cider, um, about a cup of sugar, and whatever spices you want. I used uh, more cinnamon than a person should, fresh nutmeg, and ginger. Of course, ginger. No turmeric? I had turmeric, and I thought about it. And there is a, no little, a little bit of black pepper. you got to have pepper in it. Exactly, and no. salt. Salt, pepper, no clove. Not to cut Gina off here about her soup, because her soup was paletti, because her soup is delicious. But, you know, we're, we're throwing the word potluck around and everything and a sense of community. I, I met a woman named Irene, and she really summed up exactly what the spirit of potluck dinners were. Really? Yeah. Would you like to hear it? I'd love to hear it. Yeah. I'm, 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 I, the more and more I'm listening to this, actually, the more and more I'm, I'm really upset that I was there to Yeah, man. We, dude, hand. I missed you, bro. I, I, I missed, really missed I, you. Trust me. I was in a car for 22 hours driving back from Oklahoma City while, yeah. you guys, while this was happening, and I'm, I'm very upset I wasn't there. I mean, we have some comedy gold in here, but it would have just been that much better if you were there. All right, Irene, let's see what you got. All right. Here. And uh, Irene, and run, stop in and, and talk about uh, potluck. So what's going on? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. Are you enjoying the food? Yes, I love the food. Yeah? I, I just uh, offered you some of my sangria. What do you think? I taste it in the back room back there. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Oh, okay. All right. I do this like the sangria, too. Good, I think yeah. it's delicious. Thank you so much. Sure. And it's a nice switch from the very sweet, traditional summer sangrias that we're so used to. Yeah. So I, I like the, the fall the Pinot and the Cointreau. It's nice. Yeah, that's great. So I know you wanted to come on and talk about potluck. Yes, potluck is a wonderful thing yeah. because it brings people together, sure. and I love that. Yeah. And whatever it takes, you just bring what little you do have. You don't have to go all out. It's something in the kitchen, your kitchen somewhere. Yeah. Pack of napkins, pack of cups. You know, I usually bring salmon cakes. Mm, salmon cakes. Because that's healthy. Yeah, yeah. And how do you make your salmon cakes? Well, I find good salmon, dice up onions mm -hmm. in a clean kitchen. Oh, it's got to be clean. And I put a couple eggs in, 
uh, and some partially, and love. And love, of course, is the yeah. most important ingredient to anything that you make. Yeah. Oh, just to throw in there, it's my beautiful uh, wife, Gina, that was in there talking. Gina Wilde. Yeah, she joined as us. As well, with Gina, Gina Coletti. Yeah. And good old Eileen. Irene. Eileen. Irene, I'm sorry. Come on, <laughs> Eileen, but this was Irene. This is Irene. Good she was Lord. great, man. Yeah, I hope I see her at more potlucks. She sounds like a, a ball. Yeah. An F. So, uh, Kevin Malloy. Oh, yeah, Kevin. The owner of the Tilton Cool Cafe. Yeah, and also previous candidate for mayor of Wilmington. Yeah. In years past. Yeah, he kind of uh, sits down with us and has a bit of the sangria. And, uh, and comedy ensues. Not a, Well, not only comedy, but he makes a pretty big announcement. Really? You want to hear? I'd love to. All right, here we go. I feel like we're doing like one of those like nature shows. Where it's like, How so? and, and now the, the, the piranha is about to pounce. Sorry. I don't know why I said piranha. Oh, it's the worst animal in the world to pounce on somebody. Can you say the panther is about to pounce on that. Let's watch. It is 10.40 p.m. right now. And we While are, we're recording. We're doing post-production on the third episode of Bullet Reports. Did you just hit that? Was that like a no, I don't know. little head? Bob? I don't know what that was. So here's Kevin Malloy. Kevin, Kevin Malloy. Malloy. Radio. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh, the pioneer of the arts in Cool Springs. You've been here doing it for years. You've uh, created an incubator that has not only influenced artists like myself, but many other artists throughout the, the decade plus right. that you've been doing this. Um, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for this man, Kevin Malloy. Um, so I owe you a great gratitude. I appreciate that, Brian. And it's it's yeah. to start this out. It's such a great day. It's this fifth anniversary. Yeah, wedding and anniversary. My wife's nice years, enough, nice right? enough to let me do this without with minimal bitching. You know, right? No, she knows this. Oh, no, we've got a weekend in Philly, so she wasn't being like cunty about it. Or but anything. five years ago, we at the wedding it was awesome, and then yeah. you all came to Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto that Rico. That great. that was chaos. It was. But you it, know, was a little, it was a great time. Yeah, Kevin has got a place in Ponce in Puerto well, no, Rico. No, it's actually Palmer. Oh, Palmer. That's, yeah, next yeah, to El Yonke, right. the rainforest. And, um, I was confusing my P's. No worries. Yeah. P's and Q's. So the, the uh, vision, we're actually sitting here in the Malloy Gallery, mm -hmm. and the Tilton Cool is in the front space, yeah. which is oh. good. And this, this gallery, one of the visions is to incorporate it with the uh, gallery in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So, um, you the know. The party. Let's party. Let's P R for party. Puerto Rico, D E for Delaware. Party. But if you flip it around, it's let's get deeper. D E P R. So that's Oof. like you know, that might be like a full moon hey. concept or something. Like that. Rod, what's going on, man? <laughs> like, you wanna, let's um, get deeper. Yeah, Max, you mind handing off the microphone real quick? But oh, okay. everybody <laughs> likes to party. Do you guys want to pull up a couple chairs real wow. quick? Did you put? We'll like, get you next if like, you wanted to sing out. That or what? No, that's what Acorn Squash looks like. Really. Yeah. Is that Monsanto? We have Rod and Vincent from RKVC. It's pumpkin squash. A pumpkin squash. I thought it was acorn there. The pioneers of nerd pop. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. The pioneers of nerd pop. I don't know. I, maybe after I was watching your YouTube channel, I was like, I was like, you posted that picture, and I texted Vince. Was like, apparently we're nerd pop now. <laughs> he was like, Brian always attaching labels to things. What kind of music are they? Well, in fact, they're nerd pop. I've never. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's based on some of the music that you guys yeah. did. You know, it's... it's very, uh, oh, and there's there's one coming out on Tuesday, too, that'll probably further that. I the nerd pop? That. Yeah. Is that even a genre, or is well, that something? It is. No, it kind of... It. It's out there now, right? It's, it's nerd pop. In the ether. You know what's kind of cool is that, like, you guys did... Now that I'm friends with you guys, and it's kind of funny, it's like when you do this show, and then... The kind of other people that you know, you book a guest, and then you know, a couple people that are friends with them will kind of, kind of come in and friend you. And there's two girls in New York that have your whole shtick. Oh, is it Daniel and Jennifer? Yeah, Daniel and Jennifer. Okay, they're they're actually opening for us on our birthday bash. Yeah. So uh, what's what is that about? The, it's coming October 11th. Every year since the Queen's been open, they've hosted our birthday bash. Both That's our great. birthdays are in September. However, they're really booked this year, so it's in October. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. And. Yeah, I noticed they have they wear your same red and black. Your brand in one of the videos they do. That yeah. was the joke, and then we dressed in drag like them. <laughs> nice crossplay. I think that's more called. things that I just mutter words, yeah. <laughs> so no one could hear them. Yeah. 
I'm so I actually we're in the witching hour right now. It's seven thirty p.m. Myself. October third. I did post that comment that you were going to bring up. What comment about, about you running? running for, yeah. Oh, are we we're talking There's about like, that? Yeah, or, is do. it blowing up? Does, I just saw Loretta, Loretta Walsh. And does anyone that's listening know what Facebook is? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we're here with Kevin Malloy. The, you know, scandal always seems to follow Kevin Malloy. Forever. You know, he's, he's one of the most liberal Republicans you'll ever meet. I'm not a Republican anymore. Now you're Green Party. Green. Green, Green. Green Party. Yeah. But you ran. I did. Twice. Twice for mayor right. of the city of Wilmington. Correct. The last time... I was in my 20s. As a Republican. So both the first time in your 20s yeah, as a both Republican. Times, yeah. And I know your mom was kind of had political standing in, in... My mom actually was, ran for city council, and my grandfather was a politician, city so, councilman down So your Milford. family's always been involved. Yeah, my uncle down in Palm Wilmington Beach Hall. County in Florida. Nice. But just recently, you ran... I did. Uh, just a brief, and we'll keep it brief. <laughs> yeah, we could keep we'll it brief. We'll keep that brief. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um, it didn't really work out. It didn't work out that there was time. Some, it just kind of collapsed, and there were some, some issues. And, right. And but actually, what I think is so important is to move forward. Sure. And so I am seriously considering running for city council for the 5th district in 2016. 2016. Yeah, 2016. You've heard it now, folks. Right. Kevin Malloy. A couple years out. Sammy Prado's spot. Right. That's even if he's into it anymore. Is he even into it anymore? I don't know. I mean, but anyway. That, but I think that the whole... You know, beauty so of democracy party. is yeah. is is um, you know new blood, people being involved. You know, I, I strongly advocate people to be involved in their community because that's where it all starts. Yeah. You know, we can all have um, opinions about ISIS or you know all these other things outside of your own community, but it really does come back to where you live. Yeah. Where you are on the ground, that's where it all starts. Sure. So that's kind of where I am. You know, it's like I try. Getting this building back after seven years is exciting for me mm -hmm. because I think it'll be really fun to be a, a strong part of the community again sure. and bring well, back the you people. Miss, we missed you. I mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, I'm happy to be back. I think the same time you took off. You guys went off to Arden. Went off to Arden yeah. and did you know three years in Arden. And you and you went off to Philly after the right. After I, the I uh, was up there for a couple of years and we all kind of went into hiding a little bit. Because, well, you know, seven years ago, we used to do this potluck dinner every Tuesday every night. Every Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night, yeah. we would do this. And it was artists being together. We also had the first Fringe Festival in here in Wilmington. Right, exactly. Uh, and that ran for three years. And so we had we art. Did the we had Harrison Street Players. We did plays. It was really fun. And then we did the cable show. We did the RTV show. Our TV show. Which was amazing. We did seven, no, 13 That was on 17. Lease Access. Yeah. And this was like a decade ago. Exactly, 2003. Jesus. How old was I? 12. I was thir I, I was, was twenty four. I was like no. twenty <laughs> twenty three. I know. I moved Amazing. to seven oh two and I was nineteen years old. I'm thirty five now. We had a blast. We really did. And the energy from it was amazing. It was yeah. really great. So um I think we got that back this time, but now yeah. we're all grown ups. You've got kids. Like we're like grown ups now. You're yeah, like coming five, out of hiding. Five years married. Yeah, like, I was like I was just, yeah, I was just like, I can't you know, I I gotta do something again. Like you know, and fortunately, my wife, you know, she was a dancer and performer and everything. We met in theater, and uh, and she knew that I always wanted to do something. So, you know, I really tried to get back into comics and, you know, come, you know, not, once I bought the house and everything, turn the basement into a studio and do my best friend's zombie comic, and I just couldn't. It was just, when you have a kid running around, you can't sit behind a drawing board for eight hours a day. Right. And the wife's like, you're just sitting there, and I'm changing diaper. You know, it's... But then we fortunately found, kind of found this this outlet, this creative outlet, right. that kind of, um, you know, uh, promotes uh, city of Wilmington, you know, right. artists and culture in, in Wilmington, and the food scene, and you know, the alcohol scene, and we had another TV, cool we had thing though. Cannabis to the bureau viewers, on the first line. this is cool. Yeah, this is Tilton cool. Okay. We have, um, I got an event license uh -huh. to serve beer and wine tonight. And it's for a not-for-profit, and the Neighborhood Association is a not-for-profit, Cool mm -hmm. Spring Tilton Neighborhood Association. So it's a great fundraiser, and it's a great way for people to get together. So it's like a win-win yeah. for everybody, you know? And this will be part of the Art Loop? Yeah, it's going to be part of the Art Loop. So every month now, like a hot spot kind of thing? Yeah, but also I think it's important for us to also have this, not just once a month, but yeah. we should try to be open as often as possible. Sure. For events, and for if events. fans wanted to play the front room. Or, but also you know. like as a cooperative gallery space, the different people that have um, 
small businesses of some kind, like you know Sean up on Seventh who does the lamps. These you know? lamps are great. You do the br your T-shirt. You do this. Yeah. You know Josh does the framing. Like if we have different kiosks of different things yeah. and do some consignment in here, I think it could really work. Yeah. You know, and, and I, when you have a community that Delaware has and that Wilmington has, I think it lends itself to these types of events because you know I've lived in Pennsylvania, I've lived all over the place, and I've never had a sense of community the way that I have in Delaware, and I've been here for almost a decade. Yeah, and I think that, well, all, Delaware has like one degree of separation, so it's so funny. Oh, yeah. Like I go to the gym at the Y, and I, see, I talk with Mayor Haskell, who's like 93 years old, and he still goes to the gym like every day. Yeah. He's, a, he's a trip, and I talk with him about politics, and you, know, you, you see, you see people, I mean, the former mayor, Mayor Baker, lives on this block, and it's Is great still, to be, yeah, still yeah, yeah, he still lives here, and I get to have really awesome conversations with him, and you know, you, in Delaware, you, you, you can talk with, you, I know that was a goofy saying, a place to be somebody, but it really is a place you can be somebody, because you, yeah. like, you, you can do really what you want to do. Yeah, you, I used you, to call it a place to be a body. Right. <laughs> It was funny, like, I found an old sign once that was, I had it been from like 10, 15 years ago, but I think it was an old slogan, and it was like, Delaware, it's livable. So it was stepped <laughs> up. I'm serious, I'm not even kidding, I can't even make this up. I was driving somewhere, and it was like all rusted over and everything, I said, Delaware, it's livable, exclamation, exclamation point. And you can, you know, you can what only about like shrug when you say it. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, And yeah. it can be snooty, too, like, it's good being first. That was our slogan yeah. for a while. Really? Like, what? Yeah, really? Like, no, fuck seriously. you, it's good being first. Right, like, it's good being first. Well, you're like, laughing at me. You understand why, <laughs> <laughs> you understand why we were And we have, first. like, we, we feel kind of insecure, so we make fun of Jersey, like, oh, what exit are you from? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, like, you know, Philly, like, we're in this big, like, the shadow of Philly. Yeah, you know? sure, yeah. So, like, you, you know, like, but at the same time, you got to be on the ground, and you got to yeah. have fun and make. So, Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for hosting this. Absolutely. I know you've got a lot. You've got, you're entertaining. It's been a this great time. Party. This is a great night. Yeah, it's huge, right? And um, yeah, thank, thanks again. So, Kevin Malloy, look for you, 2016. Right. City council run. Right. Right. Who knows? Maybe this could turn into a dispensary. Possibly, <laughs> pero yo hablo español. Es necesito por calle four, qu calle cuatro. I want to have calle four. Wow. So. Big things in it coming appears. up again for city council. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so he's uh, he's kind of getting back into the community, and you know he went off to North Philly and Puerto Rico for a couple of years after that whole awesome. mayoral run. Sure. Um, but yeah, so he's back, and you know he's throwing potlucks again and and art loops and everything. And please, everybody, check him out. Um, Tilton Cool Cafe right there on uh, was it Harrison and Seventh and Harrison. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Uh, next up, we have RKVC. So RKVC, you know, yeah. being in the theme of uh, community-based events like this one was, and the mm -hmm. potluck theme uh, apparently brought something delicious with them as well. Yeah, it was great. Uh, roasted pumpkin squash. Let's, mm. let's hear delicious. how they made it. Just send it over to iTunes. So we, we could. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, you know, we have the sangria. Tell us what you brought. You brought pumpkin squash. Absolutely. Yeah, I was trying to figure out something. I was really hoping, what's, what's did you name it? Uh, yeah, pumpkin squash. We roasted it. It's a, a little bit of coconut oil before cooking it and salt and pepper and brown sugar. And then roasted it all for about 45 minutes until soft. And then serve. Nice. This is literally straight out of the oven. That's why we're so late. So it's you good. You weren't though. late at all. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Right I mean, why we're on time. Yeah. What's that? This right is on very, time. Yeah. It's, it seems to be like a very organic format here today. Yeah. It's just that we've had everybody... Well, most of the time, we're right all the time. The, 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 the point was, it's very fresh. It's straight out, literally straight out of the open. <laughs> I don't always aim, but when I do, it's to misbehave. <laughs> Firefly. So um, what are you guys up to next? What's, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, the, the big thing is our birthday bash of the Queen that we were just talking about. So not only do we have Daniel and Jennifer, who are like super cute actresses like, that work in New York and Philly and everywhere, we have Nalani and Serena, who are um, these Filipino twins. They're amazing. You, I guess yeah, you've seen we them. had them at the flower market this oh, year. Oh, yes, they're amazing. They were fantastic. And uh, they're, they're like 80-year-old blues musicians trapped in like 21-year-old like hot twin girl bodies. Filipino bodies. Yeah. Wow. And they're, they're, super, they're super nice and cute. And I don't know. So we, we can't wait to have them. And then we have Maggie. You guys kind of have my philosophy. It's like surround yourself with cute girls. With beautiful, did you see the poster? You know? It's literally the poster for the show is us 
blowing out candles, making a wish with a thought bubble with all three girls' pictures above us. That's cute. <laughs> like you guys. You guys. And we with also, your emoji videos. And then, yeah. <laughs> And then we also have Maggie Gabbard, which uh, we wrote and produced with a little bit. Yeah. And she's amazing. Like, wow. it just this is keep... October 11th. Yep, October 11th. This is Saturday. Queen. So Saturday at, at the Queen, Queen Theater. Yep. Queen Theater. So yeah. please get your tickets either online or if you get them from us or one of the other artists, they, uh, the uh, service is fee is waived. Next? It's like a week from tomorrow. Yeah. So this podcast will be out before then. Sweet. Yes. Perfect. Cool, cool. But yeah, it's, it's, you... timing. it's like you planned it. It's, it, yeah. it's usually, it's usually a, a, an absolute blast. Like... Uh, it's one of those events where people see pictures of it later and they're upset that they didn't go to. But every year, people are upset that they missed it and then we tell everyone to come and I don't know. But we, the things were usually pretty full. The last show we did with Maggie at the Queen sold out. Like, family members couldn't get in. Really? They, they kept releasing tickets and then people just couldn't get in so they had to absolutely stop. Which was on... It, it was unexpected because we didn't sell out in pre-sales but the walk-ups killed it. So Nice, mm-hmm. man. <clears throat> But it's usually it's usually a really fun time. We just want to have a good time. So regardless of the genre or if it's all females or you know whatever, like we just wanted to be a good fun time. That's what we usually try to accomplish. Yeah. These, these are very three talented artists. So right on, man. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. The other little bit of news is October seventh, um, pre-orders for our Christmas uh, album come out. But yeah. there's a special surprise for iTunes users that pre-order on October seventh. So keep your eye out. We've I sent you a, the poster of it. So we'll, like, if people look on Facebook, you'll see the picture, and we'll let you kind of figure out what you think might be happening on that day. There's a little special surprise. Like you shot your eye out. A little bit, yeah. Mm. That's great with your glasses. My glasses. <laughs> That's fantastic. So we. Was we that your glass? Well, you have similar. Oh, you guys, you're all branded out. I saw that picture. You guys are getting RKVC Chuck. Converse? Yes. Oh, well, we already have them, but we, yep. we're, we, uh, we're upgrading them because these are the original shoes from when we started our KVC. Yeah. And, uh, They're talking yeah. to us now. What's that? <laughs> the shoes are flappy. Yeah. yeah. It, it's sad, though. We've been rocking them too hard. They've been with us for, through everything. And so it's like a little quasi. We've been thinking about bronzing them. <laughs> <laughs> and like kind Hanging of, them from your shoes. rearview mirror. Kind of serious. <laughs> because because clunky. They, they <laughs> 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 Trying to turn them. <laughs> 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 Whose idea was this? Yeah. This is a terrible idea. Gonna, why, like, why didn't you we can hang to Brian? From, like your, uh, your, your little like hitch in the back of your shirt. Oh, there you go. Instead of like blue balls, you have yeah. like, your arcade <laughs> dangling down there, sparking down there. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're bronze. <laughs> <laughs> but with the, yeah, they, 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 we're, we're getting new ones that are like kind of like more stylish and things. But like the old ones, the ones we're currently wearing because we're waiting on Converse to send them to us. Um, I don't know. They've been. We were. We wore them at the first show, and we've like literally been on like hundreds of adventures, like both captured and uncaptured. I mean, there's some stuff that just isn't allowed on YouTube, and and they, and they. I could imagine. We, we, we've been you guys seem like you're in some freaky, freaky stuff. Our, 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 our YouTube series we did with uh, Dream Media is called Troublemaker. Hashtag Troublemakers. So, and that's the innocent version. And and we and our debut song as our KVC was Troublemaker. So, yeah. You know. I'm trying to remember if I. Saw that I, did, I went down the RKVC rabbit hole. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh on the YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube, you know. Yeah, we're we're at like three hundred and twenty some odd videos now, I think, and just just over two years. Yeah. Wow. That's so you guys are just turning it out. Well, you know, you know, one of the things when we met up with um, our consultant that helped kind of helped us like focus what we were not. He didn't create us, but like one of the, he we sat in that first meeting. He's like, you guys are freaking hilarious you know like you're two idiots and you just you can't keep serious for me you know so he's like we need to capture this and just send it out to the masses so yeah we've been doing it ever since and it's real you know it's an easy way to kind of like travel the world without traveling the world just yet yeah we're planning our domination one thing at a time yeah sure oh my god i'm so tired it's i feel like we've been editing the show for an hour now it's actually well, more than technically <laughs> been longer than that. But no, no, I mean, like, this is a lot of fun, and, and I'm really disappointed that I wasn't there because, yeah. like, you guys had a lot of fun. Of course, I had my own experiences on the road with your with our Dorks and Forks shorts, so make sure you check oh, yeah. out the hashtag Dorks and Forks shorts and see yeah. where I was while I was on the road back and forth to Oklahoma City. There's actually, it got to one point, we were on our way back. We were on the 22-hour car ride, and we stopped at this place, and for the life for the love of me and for the, the love of God, I cannot remember the name of it, but I do remember that they were the home of the Mile High Pie. A 
sounds amazing. It was amazing. It, like they had these big, like crazy pies that had you know all the the meringue on top, but it was all scorched off. And I was just so tired and over the car ride yeah, <laughs> that I just wanted to eat and get the hell out and go back on the road and get home. Yeah, it's kind of how I feel right now about <laughs> exactly to cutting the you know working on this thing in post. But I hear you know RKVC also hung out and played for us, of course, with the yeah. talented musicians. Well, I tell they you are. what, I think. How about we wrap this show up and then we'll have RKVC play us off. Sounds good. So, uh, let's see. Thank you for listening to uh, episode three of dorksandforks.com. I am Brian Wild. You can find us at dorksandforks. Well, I just said that dot com. But also, Brian Wild Photo and Design is my um, my little photography website. It's a great website. We uh, Brian just launched it the other day. And also, you can find us at Dorks and Forks on Twitter and uh, Facebook yep. slash Dorks and Forks. Uh, also on Google Plus which uh, is a very highly underutilized social media platform, in my own opinion. Yeah. Of course, you can also always find me at the Dan Sanchez on Twitter and also at Celeb Death Toll. Of course, big shout-out to Jan Hooks, a uh, former SNL member who just passed away recently. Um, it's, well, what a shame. And, uh, yeah, just hang out and let's take a, a listen to RKVC here, here and see what they did. We'll see you next month, guys. Thanks Boom. for listening to Dor- Ladies and gentlemen, RKVC. Don't count me out, don't let me down Never told you this, but I need you around I'm a mess Got problems, too many drinks, now I'll be honest. My foot is on the ledge and I need you to know. Dirt is falling, 20 stories below. I'm waiting, you're waiting. What the hell am I waiting for? I'm waiting. You stuck around, I let you down, and all this time, I was just too proud. I'm back and forth, you stand your ground, I'm hard to love, but someday I'll come around. My foot is on the ledge, and I need you to know, dirt is falling 20 stories below. I'm waiting, you're waiting, what the hell? I'm sorry. I'm sorry.